Before I preach anything, let's just set the atmosphere and bless the Lord of your Satana la mani ereo kosana. Come on, tell the Lord how grateful you are for him. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't die in my last season. Thank you, Lord, that the enemy didn't send me this week. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't die in my sins, God. Come on and worship me, God.
breaking off your people to love in Jesus' name. Come against the spirit of homelessness. I thank you, Lord, that you have charged this atmosphere with faith, conviction, and holiness. Somebody say blind man. Blind say that again. Say blind man. Blind. And begged Jesus to touch him. Yes. And he caught the blind man. Everybody say blind man. Blind. By the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Verse 25. And then he put his hands on his eyes again. Somebody say again. again. And the man looked intently. Amplified Bible says, that is, fixed his eyes on definite objects. And he was restored. Somebody say restored. And saw everything distinctively. Even what was at a distance. Yes. Last verse. And he sent him away to his house, telling him, Do not even enter the village or tell anyone there. My title tonight is, You're Too Big for Beth City. Take your seat. It's going to make six in a second. Oh, glory. Somebody say glory to God. Glory. When we look here in the text, Jesus has come to the village of Bethsidia. And Bethsidia in the Bible is a small village. It's a small fishing village. And there was a blind man in this village. Somebody say a blind man. <laughs> and the Bible says that these people in this village begged Jesus to give him his sight. 
They begged the, they begged the Messiah to give this man his sight. And so what well, the Lord began to speak to me about that, they weren't concerned about him seeing because they wanted him to see. They was concerned about him seeing because they wanted to see Jesus do something miraculous. Right. It wasn't about him. Yeah. It was about them being entertained at the power of God. Amen. Okay. And so the Lord said to me, he said, tell my people that I didn't come for everybody tonight. But I came for the people tonight. You're getting ready to be restored. And God is getting ready to give you your sight back. And there's some things you haven't been seeing. But the Lord says, I'm getting ready to restore you back to your rightful place. And so everybody that's looking at your deliverance as a means of entertainment, God is saying, I'm getting ready to pull you up out of that company. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody saying that anymore. Every time you try to move forward, people look at it like, oh, you think you better than that. You think you better than me. You think you most holier than thou. It ain't got nothing to do with me being holier than thou. It ain't got nothing to do with me, me being better than you. It's got something to do with me being who God has called me to be and being back in the place that God has called me to be. And so if you look at my deliverance as a means of entertainment, then I don't need to be connected to you in this season. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing like that. Come on, somebody. We, listen, we don't have time to be connected to people that only want to see your only want to be entertained at your deliverance. Okay, all right, all right. My deliverance is not for your entertainment. My deliverance is for me being restored back to the rightful place that God ordained for me to be. I'm not. Come on, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. And we can't press forward, hallelujah, because tell your neighbor you got the wrong company. Now see, I ain't get nobody said it. Nobody would admit that right there. You got the wrong company, hallelujah. And we got to get around some people that want to see you better off than you want to see yourself. You can shut me down if you want to. And I'm going to preach this word tonight. God is getting ready to put you around some people that want to see you go farther than where you go. See you do more than what you've done. I don't know about you, but you want to be tired of being saved and being broke. You want to be tired of being saved and being sick. You want to be tired of being saved and got all this dysfunction in your soul. Yeah. Nobody gonna say amen to me. It's time out for us coming to church and trying to shout over our issues and yeah. shout over our foolishness and yeah. shout over our halfway barely making it. Ain't got no gas. Ain't got no food to put in my foot. I don't know about you, but I ain't got to be that kind of Christian in this hour. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get nobody to say that. that think your deliverance is a joke. Is this too real tonight? Hallelujah. So the Lord says, I'm getting ready to separate you. I'm getting ready to uproot you. God Almighty. But the scripture goes on to say, the Bible says that Jesus caught the blind man by his hand. See, Jesus couldn't even restore his sight where he was until he caught his hand. Yeah. See, I'm getting ready, I'm, I'm prophesying this to you tonight. God is getting ready to catch your hand and pull you out of everybody that don't believe in you, pull you away from all that negativity. God is getting the truth. That Jesus is the truth. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth, when you come into contact with the truth, the truth cannot be in the midst of a lie. This is why Jesus had to pull the blind man away from the village. I'm here to tell you tonight, God is getting ready to catch you by your hand and pull you up out of some mess. God is getting ready to catch you by your hand and pull you up out of confusion. God is getting ready to catch you up by your hand and pull you out of some shock. You can't be the living in the midst of confusion. You can't be the living in the midst of people that don't want to see you make it. It ain't about, it's not, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's the demonic spirits that some of those people that you're connected to yeah. is allowing to use them to keep you from going forward. Sit down because I only got like two or three minutes.
Jesus. <laughs> See, I'm making some folk mad. I must be in the will of the Lord. I must be saying what he's saying. Because I don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't know about you, but I refuse to get to my promise and not walk in. I refuse to get to my deliverance and stay stuck at the door. I tell you, never walk on through the door. Walk on through the door. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. The problem is we have tried to take our bondages into a new place. And so, God Almighty, this is why the man, this is why Jesus had to give the man a, a new, new eyesight. Because when you come out of what you're familiar with, you can't come into a new place with the same way of outlook, the same way of seeing stuff. Tell your neighbor, you got to change the way you see stuff. If you want to go higher, you got to change the way you look at yourself. I heard somebody say, you can't bring a million dollar dream to pass with minimum wage faith. Tell your neighbor, change the way you look at yourself. Hallelujah. You want to go higher, but you don't see yourself higher. You want money, but you don't see yourself with money. You, you want a better car, but you can't see yourself in a better car. You want victory, but you can't see yourself with victory. And the Lord says, I'm giving everybody in here new eyes tonight. You can go to see yourself like you have never seen yourself before. Somebody say, Lord, give me new eyes. Give me new eyes, God. Help me to see myself the way you see me. Help me to believe in what you call me to be, God. Help me to view my situation the way you're viewing it. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that Jesus spit on his eyes. Now, truth be told, if somebody spit on you, you'd be ready to fight. Come on, somebody. But the Bible says that Jesus spit on him. And then he said, I saw men walking as trees. And then the scripture went on to say again, he laid his hands on his eyes. And then he was able to see things that was at a distance clearer. See, the problem is we're trying to go to a new level and we're not asking God for a second touch. Why did Jesus have to touch him twice? Jesus is the son of God. All he had to do was go see. He didn't have to spit on him. He didn't have to touch him. He didn't have to lay hands on him. But the reason why Jesus went through all that, because the Lord is speaking to us prophetically, and he's saying to us, you need to come back and ask me for another touch. You need to come back and ask me, hallelujah, to lay my hands on your eyes again so you can see me at another level. So you can see your life at another level. Somebody say, Lord, touch me again. Close. So 26 says, and when he sent him away to his house, telling him, do not even enter the village. Or tell anyone this. So the Lord said to me, and I close with this. If God restored his sight to him and then told him, don't even go into the village. That's an indication to me that he was in the wrong place to begin with. He said, go to his house and don't go back to the village. The Lord said to, to me to tell you tonight, I'm getting ready to put you back in your rightful place. I'm getting ready to pull you out of the village of Bethsidia. Because you've been surrounded by a lot of people that's not taking your deliverance seriously. I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody say that anymore. God is getting ready to pull you back to your rightful place. And the prophetic word of the Lord is don't go back. This ain't no shopping message. That's all right. This is a message of deliverance. I'm on assignment in this season. And we got to see ourselves differently so as the body of Christ we can come together. You know what would happen, Jerome, if every youth minister in the upstate would come together? We could rent out the TD Convention Center and have the biggest youth revival that the upstate has ever seen. But it's too much competition. It's too much jealousy. It's too much envy. It's too much insecurity. It's too much ill will in this area because we can't see. Amen. 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 We can't see. So we can't support one another. We can't see. Preachers can't see, mother. And this is why they stand up here in the pulpit and say, oh, it's okay. 
It's all right. The Lord forgives you. He loves you. But you're not helping the people of God to walk in true victory. Amen. And so it's hard for the presence of the Lord to come in. Amen. I want your attention tonight. God wants us to unify. And the only way we're going to come together is to tell your neighbor, we got to be whole. We got to be whole. Somebody bless the Lord for new eyes. Come on, somebody bless God for new eyes. If you 